everybody, I am Nico D. So in one of my last videos I showed the preview of Armbian Reforged. This will be renamed to Twister OS Armbian, but that doesn't matter. So in this video I'm gonna show you how to install it and how to set it up on your SBC so you're ready for gaming. So the first thing we will need to do is of course download it. So we can go to the Armbian websites, then to forums and there we see clubs. There we go to gaming on ARM and then you will find either Twister OS Armbian or Armbian Reforged. And there is download link. So download that, write it onto an SD card or an EMMC. If you are working with an SBC that has NVMe then you can later on install it onto the NVMe. Just be sure your SD card is bigger than 32 GB because this image takes a lot of space. Once that is done we need to modify the file armbianenv.txt so that it points towards the correct DTB file for your device. So I am using the NanoPy M4 version 2, so I need a file for the M4 version 2 of course. If you work with the RockPy 4 then you probably don't have to change it. If you work with any other RK3399 just look in this list and hope you will find it. If it ain't in the list you can try some other DTB files until one works. Next thing we have to do is to maximize the partition size. So for that I'm gonna use gparted. Be sure not to change where the partition starts. If you do that it will not boot anymore. Only change it after the partition. So you make it bigger on the back side, do not change the front sides. So that was all that you needed to do to install it. Now put your SD card EMMC in your device and boot. So it will directly boot into the desktop environment. The first thing you need to do is to change your password. So the default password is 123456. So to change it we type passwd then 123456 and then two times your new password. And then to change the root password we do sudo passwd and again type your passwords. Then for the NanoPy M4 and the NanoPy M4 version 2 you have to set the governor to performance. It is best you do that as quickly as possible because when it is not at performance it can crash and it will crash a lot of times. So for that we are gonna use Armin config. So just type sudo Armin config. We go to system, there to CPU. I'm gonna use a maximum of 2 GHz. You can lower this if your temperature is too high. You can set it to 1.8 GHz for example. And set the governor to performance. Now we are safe to work with this. Now I connect my Wi-Fi. And the first thing I do of course is sudo apt update. And then sudo apt upgrade. This to be sure that the system is up to date. While I am waiting for the system to upgrade, I am adding two CPU frequency monitors on the taskbar. The second one I select to show CPU 5, so I can see the big cores and the little cores, their frequencies. And I also add a network monitor. And next we can also update box 86. So for that we go to applications, then emulators. There you see update box 86. Click on it and wait until it's finished. At the end it will ask you for your passwords. So then type your password and it will be finished. Next we can again use Armbian config to set our locals and to set our keyboard for the terminal. So just type sudo Armbian config. Then go to personal and there you change to whatever you need. 
So I'm in Europe and time is from Brussels. So locals I will leave like it is. I speak English well enough. So I use a UK keyboard. If you use another keyboard you will also have to change this in menu and then configuration I think and their keyboard. This is different for the desktop versus the main terminal. And I also changed my device name. Now that is done, here you can also install it to NVMe. So for that we go to system, then install. And there you can choose whatever you need. You can also install it to an external USB 3 device. Do you know, with most RK3399s you will have to use an SD card or eMMC to start the boot process and then it will go over to the NVMe or USB 3 device. With the RockPi C for example there should be SPI so it should be able to boot from NVMe or from USB. Mine can't do that so it's not with every RockPi 4. So now everything is set up, we can start playing games. So I'm gonna show you how to run Viper Racing. So Viper Racing doesn't work on Windows and T versions, so from Windows 2000 upwards. So we will have to choose Windows 98 for this. So for that we go to Emulators, then Wine Configuration and there we choose Windows 98. I also had to go to Graphics and there emulate a virtual desktop. Otherwise it didn't boot. So you will have to play with these settings a bit to make games work. Some games work on later versions of Windows, some on earlier. Some work with a set display resolution. And another tip is to change your display resolution to the display resolution that is set in the game. Then you can go full screen. So all we need to do now to start Viper Racing is go to the folder where Viper Racing is installed. So here games, then Viper Racing and then type wine and then Viper Racing.exe. So that's all you need to do and it starts the game and I can play one of my favorite games. There is one more thing I need to show. So when I start this game there is no HDMI sound. So for that I need to disable the audio device that isn't used. So the 3.5mm audio jack and leave the HDMI audio adapter on. Now sound will work. If you don't do it like this with every reboot it will default to the 3.5mm audio jack. So that's it. That's all I can show you for now. I will make another video about all the emulators that are installed here and about a lot more gameplay and more games that work well on it. So subscribe if you want to see more and thank you to Salvador and Pitsap. You both do a great job. Thank you all for watching. Please like my video. See you all later. Bye.